Apple is reportedly closer to bringing no prick glucose monitoring to the watch. The Apple mm. Watch, which uh, we, we, we're both wearing, so this is, not, this, this is not an app. With neither of us. <laughs> we wish we were sponsored by Apple, yeah. but we're not. The sensors that are already on the Apple Watches, which mm. vary from blood oxygen to heart rate. Now they're wanting to bring in a new sensor, which will measure blood glucose non-invasively. Mm. The technology that they're proposing is a laser-based optical density right. measurement yep. of the skin, of the veins mm -hmm. near the, the wrist, mm -hmm. I guess, which I presume... It's something about the refractory index of glucose. And, yes. Yeah. Yes. I, I don't know much so, about yeah. retention in podcasts, but yeah. I know refractory index is definitely <laughs> a negative correlator for audience retention. Refractory index. Turn the I volume right that. down. I know more about YouTube analytics. It's definitely going to tank our YouTube analytics. I'll see a spike downwards as soon as you said refractors are down straight away. What happened at this particular time point? Oh, yeah. Amanda said the words refractory index. Refractory index is enough to turn off our audience. So I think it's to do with how see-through a certain part of the skin mm -hmm. is, because it kind of needs to be pretty see-through yeah, for the laser right. to be able to get a reading so it could do me really well yeah you're you're pra <laughs> I'm practically transparent <laughs> lasers that would basically scan and take a reading mm. through it we can compare it to technology we use very routinely in molecular biology labs yeah, a spectrophotometer right. that's right yeah and you put liquid into a clear little container that we call cuvette yes and that cuvette goes in and it does the same kind of thing mm -hmm. it passes a reading through it is notoriously finicky yes if you have a little bit of condensation on the side of the cuvette <laughs> just a little bit like a little bit foggy the readings completely off yeah so how reliable this wrist-based measurement of blood yeah, glucose would be is an open question mm. right? they're not quite there yet so i mm -hmm. don't think it's ready for prime time well, are there patches now that can measure blood glucose i think there is mm. but the patches have access to blood yes that's right yeah, so, 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 but i mean technology is, is yes technology has yeah. gone further the pin prick on the finger is, mm. is not that inconvenient but mm -hmm. it is a little bit of a jab yeah. every day or yeah. however many times you do it a day but this is supposed to be non-invasive right. whoever can get yeah. this technology to market yeah. will make an absolute the killing mm -hmm. they don't just want to play the confirmed diagnosis diabetic patient base they want to go preventative route because That's they right. want to say mm -hmm. hey you will know ahead of time if you are pre-diabetic yeah. currently the technology is tabletop sized <laughs> A spectral phenomenon is, is smaller than a tabletop. Smaller than a tabletop. <laughs> Whose table is this? I don't know what's going on. A child's table? Yeah. I, yeah. The spectral photomena is what? I don't know about yeah, it's like 30 or 40 by 50 centimeters. Yeah, 10 MacBook Pros stacked on top of each other. It's kind of like the size I'm of a spectral phenomenon. I'm using the MacBook Pro as yeah. a standardized unit of measurement. Yeah, it's a, it's the Mac language. <laughs> well, we're, well, we're on the Apple theme. 10 laptops of whatever variety stacked on top of each other. They should have used that, not tabletop. That would have been, been fine. Oh, okay. I understand. Oh, what an advance. Yeah. But and but, MacBook Pro. So I don't think it's quite ready for the next iteration no. of Apple Watch, but yeah. this comes back to the idea, hey, this is big money we're talking about. Yeah, absolutely. Anytime big money overlaps with big demand, mm -hmm. potential demand. In an increasingly health conscious I think it's good in many ways, but it's really worrying. Absolutely. Guess, and if yeah. you are a person who is afflicted by this disease or at risk for this disease, and I'm one of these people, mm -hmm. right? So I have a strong family history of diabetes. Mm -hmm. Six months ago, I decided to just check things out. How my certain indicators were looking, mm -hmm. they were looking a little bit off mm -hmm. i wasn't diabetic i mm -hmm. wasn't even pre-diabetic mm -hmm. but they were just looking a little bit off yeah. i'll be honest i don't want to be at the mercy of all of these factors i don't want to have the latest nice. apple watch to know if i'm pre-diabetic yeah, of course i do not want to have to go on these medications mm -hmm. but i don't have to not mm -hmm. to say it's bad to be on these medications but pricing will go up and down yeah. the drug that might work for you might be in short supply mm -hmm. for a reason mm -hmm. that is inexplicable there might be new drugs that come out that will work much better for you that posit it as a cure yeah, because I mean, right now, I think there's no true generic insulin. We can project this for any kind of disease mm. that's kind of non-infectious. That's yeah. sort of a, a genetic or environmental mm -hmm. factor. I, I don't want to be at the, at the mercy of it. If you've watched my YouTube channel for a little while and you watch videos from like earlier last year <laughs> to now, you'll see a very clear difference. No Zempic face. <laughs> I do not have a, I kind of have a Zempic face, but I don't, I'm not on Zempic. This is another reason. I can get hold of it even if I tried. Yeah. It's just because I thought, well, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. Like I'm at mm. risk. What am I supposed to do? Yeah. So, well, mm -hmm. I can try and cut out sugar and cut out carbs. Not because I hate sugar or I think it's evil or I hate carbs. I quite like sugar. <laughs> I, I love sugar. I love carbs. The joke is I have a finite number of cupcakes I'm allowed to eat in my life. 
Yeah. And I'm almost at the end. I'm almost had my oh, last cupcake. Cupcakes are overrated. Cupcakes are overrated? Yeah. Yeah. yeah well, I'm, I'm a real fan of dessert. Kind of cut dairy as well. Again, we're not a health and well-being no, kind of podcast. I'm just trying to relay my own experiences. Yeah. I personally don't want to be at the mercy of all these yeah. market forces. And even as highly trained research scientists, it's a minefield, isn't it? To try and figure out what, you, what you're supposed to do. Because yeah. you want to be able to take some kind of action. Yeah. And grocery shopping has been exhausting because mm. every single snack has a ton of sugar in it. I just can't avoid it, right? All the yeah. things I used to love increase my risk by a certain fact. Mm. What am I willing to risk for? I'm not yeah. willing to risk for more cupcakes. That's for sure. No. Right? I can't control any you of these market forces. just drink black coffee now. Yeah, I just it's drink black coffee. It's a sad now. drink. It's not sad. It's totally fine. I feel <laughs> very sophisticated asking for an Americano. It's very, yeah, very okay. fine. It is a little mm. weird. You know what I mean? Like mm. it's it's not a very social thing to go out and not join in and have cake. Yeah. Like birthday so parties, you're a bit, a, bit a, a bit of a downer. A bit of a downer. Oh, no, 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 no sugar for me. Everyone looks at you a little weirdly. But like, what's the alternative? Like, I don't I don't want to be at the mercy of these, no, of these factors not. it's so quickly moving and you said it's made quite a difference to you right you've lost a significant amount of weight but also your blood sugar has stabilized a lot thankfully it worked mm. imagine cutting everything that brings you joy in life and have, <laughs> have no consequence on your overall health then, then i would just be like screw it <laughs> Yeah, then, then I'm... Go nuts, yeah. yeah like, genetically, I, I'm yeah. very much at risk. Got a strong yeah. family history of it. I thought I was feeling mm-hmm. fine. I didn't think I needed to, mm-hmm. like, lose a ton of weight or make mm-hmm. a bunch of changes. I just thought, let me just go and check that I'm totally fine. I yeah. think I'm totally fine. I just want yeah. some confirmation mm-hmm. I'm doing amazing. And the dogs are actually, you're not doing that great. So, yeah. changing diet mm-hmm. and really not much else, just a mm-hmm. diet. Thankfully, for the moment, my indicators are back to right. normal range. Yeah. But it doesn't take much for me to kind of go into the other right. more at-risk area again. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. the joke is everything I eat turns into caramel in my blood. <laughs> Your blood is caramel. That's right. And everything I eat, it's got a tiny bit of sugar, it just turns into yeah. caramel. We are not a health advice type podcast. No, this I'm is... Not Jack's personal experience. No, I'm not advocating for all of you to cut sugar. In fact, eat as much sugar as you possibly can while you still can. Again, I think I've had my last cupcake. You've had your last cupcake. I've had my last cupcake, but it's because of factors out of my control. And what I want as an individual is to always have as many things within my control as possible, especially as it relates to health.